This video is going to cover MHC class 2 antigen processing and presentation. Actually, we're going to focus more on the presentation, the why, the how, the when, the who. In the next video, we'll talk about how antigens get processed and loaded onto MHC class 2 molecules. So when we're talking about presentation on MHC class 2, we must be talking about antigen presenting cells. So these are cells in the body that are going to process antigens. In this case, they're going to be peptides. And they're going to be loaded onto MHC class II molecules and presented to T cells. But which cells present on MHC class II and to which T cells do they present to? So cells that present antigen on MHC class II molecules uh, are dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. These are the uh, cells in the body that uh, express MHC class II proteins. So not every cell in the body presents on MHC class II molecules. The, the dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells are the main cells that present on MHC class II. So uh, what about MHC class 1? Well, these cells have MHC class 1 molecules as well. Most every cell in the body has, uh, expresses MHC class 1 molecules, most every cell, not erythrocytes. We talked about that in a previous video. So cells can present on MHC class 1, most every cell, but only few cells, the genetic cells, macrophages, and B cells, can present on MHC class 2 molecules. And so these cells get a special designation they are called professional antigen presenting cells because they can present both on class one and on class two. And we're going to see presenting on class one uh, versus two has a different function. So um, what's special about these three types of cells? Well, all three types of these cells can take in antigens that are in the extracellular space. And we covered in previous videos about the difference between intracellular antigens and extracellular antigens. So extracellular antigens are present in the extracellular fluid. So these could be virus particles, they could be bacterial cells, and they're going to be taken into these cells via a variety of processes. So we know dendritic cells and macrophages are both phagocytes. So they can uh, both phagocytose pathogens that are present in the extracellular space, process those antigens we'll see in the next video, and present those antigens on their MHC class II molecules. B cells, uh, we know B cells have this uh, B cell receptor molecule on their surface, uh, in made in part with immunoglobulin proteins, and we uh, will learn that B cells, in fact, can also take in pathogens via a receptor-mediated endocytosis. So if you look there, it looks like that pathogen is taken into the ves vesicles of cells, and in fact it is via receptor-mediated endocytosis, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video when we talk about antigen processing. So all three of these cell types can take in pathogens into their vesicular system. They are in vesicles in the cell. Where did these pathogens come from? They were in the extracellular fluid, extracellular space, and that's their origin. And so these pathogens are going to take, get taken into these three types of cells. The antigens will be processed, and we'll talk about that in the next video. And peptides from these pathogens will be loaded onto these MHC class II molecules, and you'll see that on the surface there. So what's going to happen with these molecules, these MHC class II molecules presenting antigen, these peptides that the cells have taken in and processed? Well, MHC class II presents to CD4 positive T cells. And we talked in a previous video about these cells expressing T cell receptor proteins, as well as the CD4 protein, which interact with MHC class II. And this interaction between MHC2 peptides and the T cell receptor complex will allow the T cells to use their T cell receptor to check and see if that they have an antigen binding site that might interact with that peptide, that might recognize that peptide. So these cells here are all, uh, these T cells are checking to see if their T cell receptor binds the peptide presented on MHE class two molecules. 
So that's the function of these antigen, these professional antigen presenting cells, is to prevent extracellular antigens to uh, CD4 positive helper T cells. And these T cells will be checking to see if they bind those um, peptides. When does this happen? Where does it happen? Why does it happen? Well, that's a great question. So uh, we'll set up some locations in the body. So we've first got uh, on the right there in blue, tissue. So this could be your skin, it could be connective tissue, it could be an organ, it could be your GI tract, your respiratory tract, right? So any tissues or organs in the body where we might find tissue damage, a cut, a pathogen trying to colonize, right? So we're gonna find pathogens in tissues. Uh, we've also got the lymphatic system here. So lim any lymphatic tissue, such as a lymph node or the balt, malt, or galt, right? Bronchial associated lymphoid tissue, GI associated lymphoid tissue, mucosal um, associated lymphoid tissue. We're gonna find pathogens here as well. And antigen uh, MHC class two presentation is gonna happen uh, everywhere, whereas we're gonna see um, uh, in, this, in this slide here. So I've drawn just an example of a lymph node, but that could be a malt, balt, or galt. I've also drawn a lymphatic vessel, and obviously that's going to be draining lymph and fluid from the tissue. And let's say there's an infection in this tissue. There's some pathogen that has infected the tissue. You can see there it's replicating. All right, well, we need to uh, process this antigen and present it to T cells. How's this gonna happen? Uh, so where's the pathogen located? Well, it could be located in the tissue, replicating in the tissue. We know the lymphatic system, one of its functions is to drain uh, fluid and to drain and capture pathogens and move it into the, the lymphatic system, into lymph tissue, where you're going to find lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes that will search for the pathogen and hopefully activate to uh, unleash an attack against the pathogen. All right, so we've got our sites located. We see where our pathogen is. So let's talk about these professional antigen presenting cells. Where are they located? What are they gonna be doing? So macrophages, we've covered in uh, innate immunity in unit one, macrophages are cells that are present in your tissues. They're present in connective tissues, they're present in organs, and they're phagocytes. They sit around looking for things to phagocytose. Right, and so here's a pathogen, and hopefully they will phagocytose this pathogen and destroy it. But one thing that they're gonna do in that process of phagocytosis is process that antigen, break it down in its vesicular system, and present it on MHC class two molecules. That's a good thing, and we'll see why that is in the later video, why macrophages present. Dendritic cells, also phagocytes, also found in your tissues. So they can perform something very similar to macrophages. They will phagocytose a pathogen. But their main purpose isn't to try to clear all the pathogen in the tissue. What they're doing when they phagocytose this pathogen is they're going to carry it into the lymphatic system, into lymph tissue, such as a lymph node, and that's where they're going to present on their MHG class II molecules. So the dendritic cells are migratory cells. So dendritic cells and macrophages, both phagocytes, but macrophages, we call them resident uh, in tissues because that's where they live, they work, they stay, they eat, they sleep, right? They stay there. That's what those macrophages do. They phagocytose and they present where they live. Dendritic cells are migratory cells. So they're gonna phagocytose in the tissue and then migrate into the lymphatic system where they're going to present to T cells. Um, now, I drew a macrophage in the lymph node, and in fact, there are macrophages that live in lymph nodes. That is their resident. So uh, why do you have macrophages living in your lymph nodes? Well, you drain pathogens into your lymph nodes. So you can see that pathogen being drained up into there. You have many cells that die in your lymph nodes, and so macrophages uh, uh, phagocytose apoptotic cells. So there are macrophages that are present in your lymph nodes and your tissues, but those are two separate populations of macrophages. Then dendritic cells have typically migrated from the tissue into the lymphatic system. Uh, what else do we have? We talked about B cells being professional antigen presenting cells and uh, processing and presenting antigen onto MHE class two. This is also going to occur in the lymph nodes. B cells are lymphocytes, and we know that they go into lymph nodes 
and they try to bind pathogens with their B cell receptor. If they do, they will take the pathogen inside the cell, process it, and present it on MHC class two molecules. And you can see that as well there. So when we talk about the where and the when, right, macrophages are presenting on MHC class two either in tissues or in um, lymphatic, uh, in the lymph system, in the lymph tissue. Dendritic cells are carrying pathogens from the um, tissue into the lymphatic system. And B cells, they're going to travel through the lymphatic system and look for something to bind to with their B cell receptor. So that's sort of the where and the when, but why? Why do these cells present um, peptides uh, that they have uh, ended up taking in by phagocytosis or other receptor-mediated processes, why do they present them to T cells? That's a great question. So the first thing we can talk about is the function of dendritic cells in their MHC class two presentation properties. That function is to activate naive CD4 positive T cells. So when we talk about T cells, um, they're going to be naive T cells, and then they're going to be activated T cells. So when the dendritic cells capture pathogens and carry them into the lymph nodes, their function is going to be sh to show this peptide to any and all naive CD4 positive T cells. And this dendritic cell is going to ask that T cell, do you bind this peptide? And that T cell will test its T cell receptor to see Yes, I do bind the peptide. No, I don't bind the peptide. If it does bind the peptide, then that T cell is going to go from becoming a naive CD4 positive T cell to an activated uh, CD4 positive T cell. And there's a separate video that covers T cell activation, and that's going to be this process, dendritic cells activating T cells. What about um, macrophages and naive cells? Why do they present um, peptides on their MHE class 2 to CD4 cells. Their main function is not to activate T cells. Their, this presentation is going to allow the T cells to do their job. So in this instance here, these T cells have already been activated. Now they're going to just look at what macrophages and um, B cells are showing them. And if macrophages and B cells show them something that they interact with with their T cell receptor, then these activated T cells will actually send signals to the macrophage and to the naive B cells to activate them. So we're going to learn a process in a later video called macrophage activation. Macrophage, macrophages can be put into high gear when there's an infection in the body, when a pathogen is detected, and part of that is T cells telling macrophages to uh, ramp up their immune function. And this interaction will occur via the MHE class 2 molecule. With B cells, we covered in the last unit, unit 2, this process of B cell activation. Naive B cells binding pathogen using their B cell receptor, their B cell co-receptor, and then we also talked about the interaction between CD4 T cells, helper T cells, and B cells in a thymus dependent activation. Then that's exactly what this is. These naive B cells, this is that third signal B cells require in order to activate in a thymus dependent manner. They are presenting peptides on their MHE class two molecules to activated B cells. And when this occurs, B cells can become activated in a thymus dependent manner. So this is the why of why professional antigen presenting cells present peptides on their MHE class two molecules. So I know this is a lot to cover. Um, it's complicated. Um, this is covered in your book if you want a uh, different explanation, um, but it introduces the concept of uh, MHE class two presentation, which cells get it, uh, presented to and why and where. In the next video, we will talk about how pathogens are processed and how antigens are processed to be presented on MHE class 2 molecules.